All right. So, despite my better judgment, and because Terrell recommended I go through this, I have decided to take a look at I Love You, Colonel Sanders, and every day we stray further from God's light. My name is James, and this time on That Game Review Show, well, I already said it. Let's get into the game, I guess. But first, a little bit of history and the reason that Terrell wanted me to review this. Once upon a time, I worked at KFC as a lowly fry cook cooking chicken every day and eventually I became a supervisor and then basically a store manager in all but title and pay. I was there for two and a half years and towards the end of my employment I was working six to seven days a week, 50 plus hours a week, and I wasn't really getting paid all that well for it. The only reason I bring this up is because after my, well frankly really shitty experience working at KFC, and I'm not even going to touch the half of what made it so shit. I am very heavily biased against KFC as a company. Well, I do have some fond memories of working there. That was entirely down to the co-workers I had at the time, not the job itself. That being said, I don't really have anything against KFC food in general. I'm personally not a fan of full pieces of fried chicken but I do enjoy basically everything else that they have to offer, at least well enough. Almost all the problems levied against KFC are down to the company itself, if that makes any sense. I Love You, Colonel Sanders is a dating sim advertisement based on getting into a romantic relationship with the handsome version of Colonel Harlan Sanders, or as he prefers to be called in game, the Colonel, as you and a handful of other people go through the three day school year at a prestigious culinary academy. Yes, that is the plot. And here is a good place to mention that Colonel Sanders, the real one, not the digital one here, actually despised KFC later in his life because he hated how cheaply and shittily the food was being made. To the point of like throwing shit around in the restaurants and saying he wouldn't even feed it to his dog. To be fair, I don't think dogs are supposed to eat a bunch of sodium and most of what KFC serves is like, like 70% salt, but I don't have any evidence to back that up. Maybe he was just a mindful pet owner. If it wasn't hard to tell, I really don't want to talk about this. But I already have it all recorded, so I guess I kind of have to. The intro cinematic, showing off the characters of the story, is goofy and wacky, and I can't really say much else, besides the fact that it's actually very well animated, and it's kind of upsetting. So starting the story, I can't really say starting the game because it's not really the game. Starting the story, you are so very rudely awoken by a loud and frankly super annoying alarm clock, which is meant to wake you up for your first day of school. You have the option of either getting up or throwing the clock out of the window and staying in bed forever. As I was trying to make my character's mindset more like myself, I threw the clock out of the window and sure enough, quote, you slept through the school year and gave up on the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to meet Colonel Sanders. Oh darn, I guess that means the review is over. Okay, yeah, the review isn't over. Get rid of the end screen. Really, seeing as there isn't much to talk about apart from the story, it is a dating sim after all. I kind of want to go in depth with the story, but I also don't, seeing as it's I love you Colonel Sanders. At school, you meet up with your childhood best friend, Miriam, a nervous wreck who is afraid she will mess up and not catch up over the three-day school course. You also meet up with Ashley and Van Van. Full disclosure, I'm spelling Ashley the normal way because the way it's spelled in game is super obnoxious and I honestly really hate it. Anyways, they're the rivals for some reason, and there's also like an annoying little kid named Pop who might be an actual little kid for some reason. Once you get into class, you meet your professor, Sprinkles the dog. Oh, I'm fucking sorry, Professor Dog. Then, as cherry blossom petals flow into the room, Colonel Sanders walks in and your character is immediately in love with him. For some reason, he is super into your character as well. Uh, and there's another character here, uh, he's like the butt of a joke, and I'm not really going to talk about him. 
So once the first class is over, everyone goes into the cafeteria and smell a meal that the colonel has cooked for everyone. Surprise, surprise, it's a bucket of fried chicken, presumably original recipe. And I will give ILYCS credit here. Uh, the food drawings look really good. He boasts about how he spent years coming up with the recipe and that, quote, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. And then Van Van and Ashley insult his chicken, saying that one of the ingredients might be poison. But as your character takes a bite, he is transported elsewhere, where he can be alone to contemplate the flavors. Quote, Alone with the flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love. For a man? For a flavor? Are they the same? Yeah, this game has a really biased look on KFC food for some reason. So you ask him what is on the chicken, and he naturally doesn't want to answer the question. But he says that it will make him successful at owning a chain of chicken fried restaurants. Maybe based out of Kentucky. After some coaxing, you convince the colonel to tell you one of the ingredients, and this is actually kind of funny, having the words censored out like this. But they didn't really have to do that, they could have just put a super common ingredient there. Like, I can tell you for a fact that there's black pepper in there. Fun fact, actually, even on the seasoning packets used in KFC restaurants, like, that the actual employees use, they only say various herbs and spices as opposed to an actual ingredient list. To be fair, I think the recipe is available online, but that's besides the point. The second lesson of the day is in the cooking arena, and you team up with Colonel Sanders for the occasion. However, since Miriam is alone, she gets the choice of a new partner between Pop and Clank. I didn't mention Clank. He's a sentient pressure cooker that looks nothing like the pressure cookers they actually use. Since I really hated Pop, I had her work with Clank. You get different choices on what to make with Colonel Sanders. But naturally, since one of the dishes is mashed potatoes and gravy, you have to go with that one. And seeing as KFC's mashed potatoes and gravy are entirely made from powder and water, it would be easy enough, though in the game they do describe mashing the actual potatoes. Maybe it's a reference to how real potatoes are made, not fake ones? Anyways, again, the drawing of the food looks really good. And then later, you stare into Colonel Sanders' eyes as he holds out a spork to you. Van Van's dish is an octopus on a battle axe, naturally. Outside, you and Colonel Sanders have a bit of a heart-to-heart -heart about the potatoes, but then Van Van shows up to be a dick, but then suddenly, Spork Monster is here. And now, it turns into a turn-based fighter. You only get two options, attack and defend, and apparently the right choice is defend. Because then the colonel steps in and summons the energy of a thousand chickens and activates its special move, the Pot Pie Power Pinch. Once Spork Monster is defeated, it drops a cookbook and you can see the name Borgo written on it. And then you pass out and find yourself home with Colonel Sanders having helped you. The next day at school, Miriam is gushing about Clank. And as you tell her about your night with the colonel, you see him arrive at school riding on his horse. I decided to run up to him, and the horse ends up kicking you in the face because that's what a horse would probably do if startled. You wake up after getting knocked out and you compliment the shoes on the horse. In the classroom, you see Ashley and Van Van reading in a magical book, and this story thread really goes nowhere for some reason. Oh, and the book they are using is the same book that Spork Monster dropped the night before. So after this mess, Clank comes in and runs over Van Van's foot. Then they're all about to start fighting, but Colonel Sanders, prompted by Ashley, steps in and tells them all off. But then admits he's largely disinterested, seeing as he has his franchise to worry about. Sprinkles comes in and he tries to lick off the scent that Colonel Sanders left on you the night before. That's really gross, but Sanders does scold him like the bad puppy he is. As the lesson goes on, you begin to daydream about the colonel, instead of focusing on the lesson of chicken history, where apparently a chicken was the first person to sign the Declaration of Independence. When you come to, you're given the choice to sample one of three objects. I picked the dog biscuit because I 
figured Sprinkles cooked it, but I was wrong. Sprinkles destroys your apron and you pass out from being too embarrassed and you can't go on. Also, I do really like the text box, is this the end? It just kind of makes me laugh a lot for some reason. In the void, you see Borko the Spork Monster, who repairs your apron as a way of repaying you for sparing his life the night before. The next thing I picked was the glass of water, which was apparently from Sprinkles' favorite toilet, so that's kind of gross. Ashley and Van Van challenge the school to a cook-off for lunch, and you accept it. So now, Colonel Sanders says he likes your gumption and he'll be watching you, and your character is super self-conscious about competing. Sprinkles comes in and turns on the timer for the competition, and it's a bunch of rapid-fire questions. Some of them are common sense, like what temperature water boils at. And others are about KFC, like the amount of spices in original chicken. But as the questions keep coming, images of Colonel Sanders jump into your mind because you keep thinking about him. You get less and less time to answer each of the questions. You put the biscuit, though, in the stand mixer by mistake, and when you try to pull it out before it gets overmixed, your hand gets crushed in the machine, and Sprinkles stops the competition. I'm sure this goes without saying, but KFC biscuits are also frozen! Who knew? Like everyone, I think. Ashley has the Colonel try your dish, which was a super fancy dessert, and your character gets really jealous. And I decided to internalize my anger, and apparently it made my eyebrows catch fire, so that's pretty neat. Colonel Sanders meets you outside, and while you two have a great heart to heart, the Spork monster, Borko, makes another appearance, and he apologizes for attacking you the night before. And you do apologize for immediately attacking him. Borko says he'll be there when you need him the most. And then suddenly, you are at Colonel Sanders' house, and on a whim, you decide to reveal to him a special secret recipe that you'd been working on for a while, coleslaw. Naturally, Colonel is impressed, and he, like a weirdo, wants to keep the last bite of it for... some reason. And while he is away, you snoop around his house, looking at all of his belongings, like a chicken statue, or a framed picture of himself as a baby. Clearly, Colonel Sanders is a perfectly normal dude. The door to his closet somehow opens up, and you put on one of his jackets, because you are just as normal as he is, apparently. You two talk all night long until sleep takes you, and there is a really kind of weird dream sequence, too. Once you wake up, CS makes you breakfast, a simple plate of a drumstick and a biscuit cut in half with some butter. Real breakfasty. But I feel like they were working with what they had. KFC isn't really known for their breakfast food because they don't really have breakfast food. Okay, another weird tangent. One day when I still worked there, I was opening and this dude showed up at 9 a.m. like an hour before we even opened. And he just sat there and just waited to get his food. It was really fucking weird. And I don't know what compels people to wait an hour for some KFC. But apparently, they just really needed their chicken. Okay, tangent over. Just KFC should have something for breakfast, but I understand better than anyone that they aren't really set up for that. He asks you if you think you two are a perfect team. His cooking and your taste buds. And you agree, and you two fall in love forever. Okay, not really. I just want this to be over soon. CES mentions something about having the right business partner. Partner? Partner, and this freaks you out, so you head back home and find Miriam there waiting for you. She had apparently gone on a date with Clank, somehow, and the two of them went skydiving. Then, just to be a dick, you rub it in her stupid face that you went to Colonel Sanders' house, and that she didn't because she has a stupid fucking face, and I'm the best. Then, that fucking bitch tells you to move past your obsession with Harlan, like, how dare she? Back at school, after thinking about what Miriam said about being too fixated on Harlan, and pull out the magical cookbook with the intention of doing a mind erasing spell to get rid of any memories you have of CS, you don't do it. I didn't want to, at least. So you go to class just like normal. But back in class, before Sprinkles is able to say his important announcement, there is a fight between Miriam and Clank, because apparently she hated skydiving with Clank's friends. 
Clank spits out a deep fried sneaker for some reason. That this that was just kind of strange. I don't know why they added that. Sprinkles informs you of a final baking championship, and then you go outside and pep talk Miriam. Once you're done, you head into the battle arena to practice a dish, the chicken pot pie. Which, if it's supposed to be the KFC pot pie, doesn't make sense, because the pot pie is made of leftover chicken that wasn't sold the day it was cooked. So when your character is just using random chicken in it, it's not a KFC pot pie. I know that it's a strange tangent, but I think it has to do with the fact that they don't want it to be common knowledge that they recycle old chicken into the pot pies. I mean, it still tastes fine, it's probably just an image thing, I'd imagine. Harlan comes in while you're working on making sure you have the recipe down, and despite trying to play it off like you weren't cooking, the timer for the pies goes off, and then you fess up to cooking a little. And just like the other pieces of food, it comes out looking good but also way better than the pot pies do in real life. And it's the best pot pie that Harlan has ever tasted because of course it is. So I am gonna glance over this competition. The script is running really long already. Plus it's a lot of nonsense where people do their like special power up moves while they're cooking. And a new spork monster shows up because Borko wasn't available or something. So instead of working by himself like the rules say, Harland, quote, follows his heart, and deciding to help you with your dish of macaroni and cheese. He offers you some chicken tenders, and with their powers combined, they create the, the new mac and cheese bowl? Are you fucking kidding me? You're trying to tell me this shit is just a fucking advertisement for the goddamn mac and cheese bowl? So, the mac and cheese bowl aside, this was honestly kinda stupid, but it did have a couple of funny moments. And I can tell that whoever made this must have had at least a good time doing so, even if it leaves the entire experience feeling... odd. And this is also the second dating sim visual novel thing like this that I've gone through, the first being Doki Doki Literature Club. This wasn't nearly as good as that one. But I guess it worked. I haven't eaten KFC since I quit there well over a year and a half ago, and now I kind of want some. So, good on you, KFC. Just know that the real Colonel Sanders is rolling in his grave. Thank you so much for watching this video here on That Game Review Show. I really hate how long the script ended up being, but it might be worth it. Next week will be Terrell's week, so come and join us back here then. Also, is no one going to mention the fact that Colonel Sanders stole all of the food ideas from you? The only thing he contributed was the batch of original recipe chicken. And I guess biscuits, but those aren't crazy. Fuck this.